Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today we are driving into the future of data management with an exciting new offering from Google Cloud. So Spinal Graph. So we had a code, GraphDB, right? What is the difference between the GraphDB and Spinal Graph? So before knowing about Spinal Graph, let's understand what is Graph Database. So a graph database treats uh, relationships between the data as equally important as data itself. So if you look at um, the, the SQL database, when we are querying the data, the data is stored into the tables and it has a, a relationship and it's created into the indexing. So whenever you are querying the SQL uh, queries, it's take a lot of compute one. The graph is gonna have the uh, node and it creates a relationships on top of it. So in a modern era, when we are working at the Gen AI, so we need to we need to know right how we leverage the capabilities of vast enterprise data with precise output of it. So graph well it gonna gives a, a a more relationship information whenever we are querying with the help of the prompt. This is an example of the graph, knowledge graph and gender to a reference architecture. So there are different data sources, which might be the structured data, unstructured data. So structured data is gonna be into the CSV, XML and JSON format. We use the knowledge instructions and injections with the help of LLM. So why I use LLM here, the, because LLMs is going to help us to, to uh, do the data injections uh, in the combination of that both uh, unstructured data. And we convert with the help of OpenCypher. So OpenCypher is an open uh, uh, framework which, which convert our, our uh, knowledge extraction into the graph database. Whenever we are creating intelligent app, either it's a customer service, uh, uh, the recommendation engines, and might be a clinical decision support system, which required uh, a precise knowledge one. So which I said earlier, there are different ways of doing uh, the more precise uh, way of getting the information. There might be a multi-Asian um, methods. Uh, we, we can try to, to have the external information as well. But today we, I'm gonna explain to the what, what is the difference between the um, uh, knowledge graph DB and Spanner. So Spanner is being comes uh, a pre-built graph database uh, with the Spanner. So it's a Google Cloud offering. It, it's it's going to go for enterprise, which are um, um, highly scalable. So Spanner graphs support a query interface compatible to uh, the ISO gra uh, graph query language. It's a standard one. So it's been well established on top of the SQL one. So it, it has a pattern matching from the GQL. It, it's mapped the data into the declarative schema without having a data migrations to, to, to the ones. So it's a revolutionizing offering that combine the pre-built graph database and capabilities within the spanner. And it's available globally uh, with unlimited scalable of the databases. When we go for enterprise model, the scalability is a major concern and the spanner graph is gonna gives the interface and the scalability opportunities, the ones. So today exercise, what we are trying to do it. So we are building a financial fraud detection, but I'm not going to build entire financial fraud detection here. I'm gonna build a spanner graph. So I'm gonna show the capabilities of a spanner graph. So I created a spanner instant, so which has been on my left-hand side, build and the graph then. TP, and we can use a, the graph neural networks. What is a graph neural network? So if you go through this uh, paper, uh, which kind of should, tells you, right, anomaly detections play a critical role into the cybersecurity. What does it mean that today in the world of like Paramount, uh, the, in the internet, traditionally, there is gonna be a lot of frauds is gonna happening. So if you find out anomaly detection method, it's really on predefined rules, which, which makes a lot of challenging 
to the ones but gyan is kind of um, uh, promising a kind of like a detection trait so when, when we identify the real time anomaly detection it's, it's coming from the incoming traffic and we understand like who is actually making those transactions and we can identify um, the different traffics and then we can alert to the customer stating like that, that there might be an issue right so we can have the capabilities of real-time monitoring we can have our anomaly detection on top of it with the help of the gnn and then we can alert to the customer stating that something fraudulent activities happen let's take an example some some user who is trying to do a lot of fund transfer but we identified he, he done uh, a transaction from a different location so by the help of the graph dp we, we can have that property relationship between the node and property and, and we can identify whether he's his actual genuine person who transfer uh the amount from a different uh, person or not so what what is going to happen in the right we are going to identify in a real time uh, data incisions with the help of like pops up we, we can use um, a red pond as well in here to do the injections uh, to, to GCP and then we, we, we can use LLMs uh, kind of like interface to the customers not only just notify and ask them to write so what kind of like transaction happen how, how they want to secure their account uh, whether they wanted to raise a, a ticket or not so most of the cases right when I, I do a transaction I used to get a call and saying like to accept the transaction but if uh, some of the banks which identify the transaction uh, are, they can send it towards a message like saying like accept or not and otherwise with, with the help of um, the, my personalized fingerprint uh, to do allow those transactions and notified if any fraudulent things are happening at once so to achieve that so what what today i'm going to do it right i created a spanner graph so it's, it's more kind of like um, uh, GCP build one. So how the graph is gonna uh, work here. So I, I created a spanner. So I created a demo for the spanner graph. And then I started seeing it right, what kind of like uh, financial graph TP where we created a financial graph DP once. And the schema is most important whenever we created this, the financial ones, because schema is gonna help us to identify the relationships. So now say the customer one has a account and, and he has a account, replay account. So let's say it's like we identified the customer, how much of like a transactions he's doing, a, how much money he is, is sending it, what could be the critical path of the customers and who actually owns the primary account with the person, right? We define the schemas and we try to query with the help of the graph DP and understand the relationship between uh, the person uh, nodes and then the properties when we can create the edge one. So all I did is right, I went through and I created those um, editor. So the moment I run this fin graph, uh, asking that what is our account number, and uh, I've given the account ID and the transfer is, is is greater than three or six, and then case the number of hops has been happening and what is edge of these transactions. So if, if you wanted to understand this graph, Ali needs to go and try to ask uh, Jiminy. So it's going to explain to us that what what is this query is all about the graph query so this query is going to be um, specifically into the fin graph so it's trying to match any shortest one uh, the path and uh, from a source account id is we have taken a 75 but we can give the source account and the number of transaction is maximum six with the hops of transfer and the return of the length we define to it it's it's a map reading exercise to find the shortest route between two accounts having uh, the steps involved into it. So let me run this. The moment I run this, it's going to give me this detail. But if I'm going to go for the explanation part, it's going to create me a detail 
graph to me. So what does it mean? Like what is the relationship between the person, how he's do the transaction? And you can understand how faster it's been responding to it. Like it's the latency is like uh, the milliseconds of the latency, which is showing that. Let's go to, to the second one. So I'm trying to see the match, right, from um, a, a con person, right? And trying to see like how many different loan accounts he he actually making a payment. So this this gonna help me to understand how much money and the person is actually spending on, on the loan side of it, whether I have to give the loan or not to him. The moment I run it, I can understand that what are the different different loan accounts he's sending those those uh, money. So which is gonna gives me the similarly. So. Jacob is the name of the person and has taken out some repayment uh, amount and he's trying to make the payments, which are the accounts is trying to make the payments, uh, the ones. So it, it's like we are trying to investigate Jacob, a loan history. So understand his financial activities. That's help us like whether uh, we can provide a, um, a loan for Jacob or not. So it, it's going to be beneficial for, for the fintech industry with the uh, relationships uh, and trying to find out like how much money he's paying get whether he's is applicable for the loan or not and finally we can take the final approval like whether whether he have to go ahead and, and approve his loan now this is a uh, another graph query so what is important of this query is like this query is going to help us to fastly retract, retrieve the information. So traditionally, we have a huge compute and scalability, the ones, but it's identified how fast it's going to get gets the details. So let's see what's happening. Um, so we, we are trying to see any, any uh, money overflow ratio to here. And, and we have given that overflow amount and understanding and calculating. So it's a it's a kind of investment on top of the uh, audit for uh, uh, a user account which we're trying to see how much money is having inflow and outflow i'm trying to understand like the highest ratio between the inflow and outflow what kind of like when when you're trying to solve for a high value customer you should know right what is the inflow and outflow what what current um, um, the way he is sending the money to whom is sending the money and let's understand that the fourth uh, graph query. Uh, no, the fourth span fin query. So why we call it as a fin query is a financial query within our spanner query. So so it's gonna give some more accurate account details wise. Let me run this one. And this is an ideal case, right? A fraudulent activity happen, and somebody else like. A new device has been linked to, to before he, he, he do the transactions to ones. So we have the, all the information. So uh, when his subscription is renewed, uh, when his user is logged out, what is his building information? When the new device is linked, and, and when the password has been reset, and when account API key has been revoked. So we have the, all the details. So we can understand like there might be a, a fraudulent activity happen, a suspicious activity happen on the customer account, and we can red flag now on top of it. We have the real time uh, GNN, which gonna run on top of it. And we can notify to the customer saying like, hey, somebody gonna be registered on, on your um, account uh, and so and so time and, and details. And we, we wanted to uh, suspect that as a kind of like a fraudulent uh, suspicious activity. And we, we have temporarily shut down the services. So this is a way which, which we are gonna identify it a financial fraud and the graph db is ideal for financial detection so it should be a combination that's what like in my previous um uh, rag or which kind of like strategy which we have to be choosing so it's whenever it's going to to find anomaly detections its graph is going to be ideal because it's more like the person and it's node and the relationship of the uh, the nodes and the location and the property details we can identify it and then we, we can we can identify any fraudulent activity not just a fraudulent activity it's kind of a recommendations we can give it so let's say it's like how how it's nodes gonna works it like 
a person is going to be acting as a node and it has an account. So he might have multiple accounts as well. So, and who is, is actually sending the money? So let's say it's like if, if I, I account ID is like um, one, it, it's, it sends the different account and it transfers the money. So we can have the holistic view of the transactions and inflow and outflow and who accept, have the kind of like fraudulent activity. Thanks for watching and I hope you like it and let me know if you wanted to have more um, informative sessions and I'm happy to do that.